It's an awesome spectacle, an audacious display of seething opponents, once again parallel in an obstinate attempt to prove the superiority of the roads unequaled in our lifetime. The crowd swell in anticipation as the light turns green to listen to Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and master connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad by all of the things I never had. Welcome everyone to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host Lou Diamond and today on Thrive Loud, we have the profit coach. She has helped thousands of businesses rise, have radical success strategies, taking them from ordinary to explosive. She is a 20-year proven track record, building two $10 million companies under her belt and sold her businesses for millions. Wow, awesome. She is the author of Power Your Profit, and she is here to show us how to do so on Thrive Loud today. Thrive Loud listeners, I bring you Susie Carter. Susie, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Thank you so much for everything you do for our industry. Well, I'm excited to have you here. I am I am pumped. I, I did a little bit of research and the listeners need to know Susie's so busy. She's got so many things going on that I, that I think we were supposed to meet last year. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were actually. You don't even have to kid on that. It's been it's been banana ramas in a good way. But we are we are lucky. We got her in under the wire here. This episode's airing in late December, mid mid to late December here. So everyone's getting a chance to to check you out. For those who don't know you, Susie, here's what I want to do. I want to do a little rewind here. I kind of want to understand how the work that you're doing now became your gig. Yes. Well, my it became my gig because I sucked at my gig, right? So I'm like most entrepreneurs, you start with a vision and a dream. And my first vocation was I was a hairdresser. And I found myself as a single mom with two little kids with no alimony, no child support and having to hustle, figure out how to make it happen. To give you some context, the average hairdresser at that time was making 30 grand a year. Mm. I built a quarter of a million dollar business by myself. So as a solopreneur, um, and then built one of the largest salons and spas in the country and not by size, but by productivity. We did a million dollars in 1200 square feet. Just to give you an idea, it normally takes 30 to 60 technicians to do a million dollars. We had six. So we were very efficient, very productive. And people started going, what are you doing? Paul Mitchell came to me and said, can you teach our technicians how to do this? Now, give you an idea. I did not know how to speak. I'm like, sure. How hard can that be? I'll teach him. <laughs> did not know how to do that. And then clients said to me, hey, do you have a book? I'm like, no, I don't have a book. I'm just trying to share the good news. They're like, if you had a book, we would read the book. I'm like, okay, well, I'll figure out how to write a book. So I wrote a book. And then they said, oh, my God, hate to read, love the book. Do you have it on audio? I'm like, no, I don't have it on audio. This was just me giving back to my industry. And I built this training and development company based on what my clients said they needed. The every topic that I talked about, they're like, oh, do you have that? Can I buy that? And this was my pricing strategy back in the day. Well, how much would you pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> had no strategy. I didn't know anything about speaking business. I didn't know anything about building consulting business. I was a technician. And if you look at 15% of our financial success is based on our vocation. The other 85% is all the things I do now, which is sales, marketing, operations, finance. You've got to have that strategy to build a strong business or you end up owning a job versus owning a business. So my love for this came from because I had to figure it out. Now, I am seasoned. I've been doing this a while. And back in the day, there wasn't people teaching you the behind the scenes or I couldn't find them. Right. Especially in that industry. And then I found myself teaching at this millionaire summit and in the millionaire summit, like, again, I wasn't in, I was just in the beauty industry and these people would come up to me and go, Susie, I love what you do. Can you teach me? I'm like, 
I don't know anything about being a an attorney or a doctor or a graphic artist or a musician. I don't know anything about that. Like, we don't care. We love you. It'll, it'll all apply. And for years, Lou, I pushed it away, pushed it away, pushed it away because I was scared. I mean, let's be honest. I was scared. And then I'm like, I know I'll double my prices. They won't pay that. <laughs> no, they paid it. They paid it. No problem. Right. So I, that my first client, I was, oh, I don't know how to do this. And then I realized business is business is business. Right. Once you understand the formulas, once you understand what everybody's cost of goods are, there's there's certain things that are for each industry. They're specific. Right. How much your supply should be, how much there's all percentages, how much you should spend in advertising, what your compensation should be. And once I realized that it, it's just been this roller coaster of fun and exciting and helping people make millions. That's fun to me. I always say math is money. Money is fun. I love it. Nobody likes the math. But everybody likes the money that it brings. <laughs> so so you hit something really interesting here, and that had to do with raising the prices and the value of something, and then if it, they're still paying it. And you can't even believe that they're going to do it when you throw a number out there. There's a lot of people who have an interesting issue with money um, and charging values for their services. And I love the way that you've come it up almost math-wise, formula-wise, to basically say this is what should work and this is what's going to make the most sense. However, a lot of people have issue getting over the hurdle of that dollar amount, putting a number to their name or thinking they're worth that much. One, have you run into this? And two, what do you say to these people? Oh, my God, I run into it every single day. One, charging what you're worth. And two, how do you charge what you're worth? How do I determine what price Lou should charge, what price I should charge? Now, there's a formula in creating your pricing. First of all, you're not paying for my time. I'm not paying for Lou's time. You're not paying for Susie's time. You're paying for our expertise. I've been in business for 30 years. I've had huge successes and huge failures. So you're paying for my failures as much as you're paying for my successes. So in my formula, I'm looking at how much time does it take you to do what you need to do? I need you to just understand that. And then I'm looking at, well, what, what percentage of my overhead goes to that time? What percentage of my advertising goes to that time? So I'm looking at all these other indicators that go into whatever product or service that you're selling. So when we come up with a pricing, you know what the number has to be. Now, Lou, I had to learn this the hard way. I had a million dollar business. It was when I had the salon and spa. We won every accolade imaginable, right? We were on every magazine, on the cover of magazines. We won awards for being the most productive. And that year, Lou, I lost $70,000. Hmm. And I'm like, I, literally, I was in the parking garage talking to my sister crying, going, I could work at McDonald's and make more money than I'm making in this million dollars. I felt like a fraud, right? And I'm like, why? What is it? What is it? We were the highest priced. Our team, for the most part, was produ productive, right? We, when I'm looking at their average ticket, but it, everybody had to be a superstar in that business in order for the business to work. Now, if you go and if you've ever studied Michael Gerber, he says you have to take ordinary people and turn create ordinary people into having extraordinary results. So I started looking at my weak links were costing me seventy thousand mm. dollars. I'm like, well, my pricing doesn't allow for, there's always a loss leader in your business, right? So if I look at hairdressers, haircuts are loss leaders. If I look at an esthetician, a basic facial is a loss leader. If I look at a landscape designer, their maintenance is a loss leader. We need to look at what are those up services, up charge in order to increase the average sell for the client. Well, if your pricing is always set on, I have to upsell, it doesn't allow people room to breathe. So I was always in this hustle. I was always trying to make that dollar happen. So then you start feeling like you're selling all the time and you're slimy and there, there's such a grind to cover your overhead. Well, if you know from day one, this is what my price needs to be. Now, Lou, I had to charge $15 across the board. So every service had to go up $15. So a client might be paying an extra 40 or $50 for their service. Did we lose some? Yes. But I knew from that day forward, I can't, I can't charge any less or I'll go out of business. I was already going out of business. It just was sexy, right? People get so caught up in that top line. I did a yeah. million dollars. Who cares if you lost 70 grand? 
And so it's important that we all talk about the numbers and share, because then you realize, well, if I take that client for less, uh, uh, you're taking food off your table. Okay. You're not being able to pay your car payment, your house payment, whatever that is, right? Or you're always robbing Peter to pay Paul, or you're always on this hustle. That's the hamster in the wheel. That's why you can't find peace in your business and why you start resenting it is because we never had set it up for it to be profitable from day one. Now I say set it up to be profitable. Not only do you have to have your base price to cover your expenses, but I have to have profit in there or we're just working to work and we have a really sexy job. Right. And that's okay. Some people want a really sexy job where they don't have to answer to anyone but themselves. But at the end of the day, I'm doing this for my wealth strategy. I'm doing this for my legacy. I'm doing it to build something, not just have a sexy job. I can go get a sexy job, right? I can go get paid lots of money. No, I want to make money, leverage my wealth, build my wealth, monetize my wealth, and have multiple income streams. Love it. I just want the listeners to know, obviously, that I would not be somebody that would show up at one of your hair salons. And obviously, that would be, I would definitely be a loss leader <laughs> with you because we buzz it all over here. It doesn't require too much attention on that front. Although I do like the spa treatments every now and then. You got to go in yes. there. Yes. Uh, men are definitely coming to a new awakening of, Getting in on our secret we've been doing for years. Yeah, I haven't cut my toenails in many years. Anyway, so <laughs> I want to make I want to make something very interestingly clear. This is, by the way, great way to to talk about understanding where the value is. Uh, you made a great comment that what you were doing in your business was carrying over into other businesses. Uh, th so you basically, whether you knew it or not, your hustle created a process, and that yeah. process is something that can transmit over. Have you run into areas where your power your profit methodology does not work or doesn't work as well because it's a certain type of business or pricing model that doesn't fit? No, <laughs> business is business is business, right? <laughs> when you look at it, there's a formula. And so I might have to do more research because I don't know, right? And I, if I don't understand the business model, I don't take the business, right? And there's not been one that I've taken on that I haven't been able to figure out what are the numbers have to be in order for this business to be profitable. You, If you have a good CPA, right? A CPA is great. They're going to tell you what happened. I'm a strategist. So I'm going to show you how do we leverage it and make more happen. The craziest business I had was they had a like a Home Depot. So they had a hardware store. In the middle of the hardware store, mom had opened a jewelry store because she didn't want to sell hammers. She said, I'm going to sell Bill diamonds for his wife. I'm, I know all the men in this town and I know when their anniversaries are, when their birthdays are. So when they're buying a hammer, I'm going to say, hey, Bill, don't you need a birthday present for June? <laughs> <laughs> and when the client came to me, the, the business, the jewelry business was doing 5 million. The hardware business was doing a million. And so he said, Susie, I think I want to take the jewelry business out of the hardware business and put it in its own space. I'm like, why would you do that? We are getting $5 million of advertising. And the men that are coming into the hardware store would not walk into a very stuffy jewelry store. They like spending money there because they don't have all the pomp and circumstance that a normal jewelry store would have. Right. And they were doing business to business relationship selling. So they had a relationship with mom. Then they had a relationship with daughter. And then they had the relationship with that salesperson. So they did, had no pomp and circumstance because there were, you know, twenty five thousand, fifty thousand dollar diamonds next to nails. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really had to do my due diligence to go. Does it make sense to pull this out of there? Would we make more money? And hands over fit when I did the, the projections. I thought we would lose money. I thought the market share would go down. It would be hard to take that kind of consumer and have them go to a more structured place, more something that was more luxurious. I'm like, absolutely not, right? Mm -hmm. Let's really look at what are we trying to get? Do we want the hardware to do more? Do we want the jewelry to do more? I think the jewelry can do more. It just needs strategy. Right. Because they put that jewelry store, they just kind of plunked it down because mom didn't want to sell hammers. There wasn't really strategy. It just kept growing because the hardware store would get busier and the men would go, wow, there's diamonds here. Wow. I don't have to go anywhere else. I can get my hammers, my nails, my diamonds. <laughs> so got, that's such a guy sale. That's a genius whoever came up with that model. Soon right? we're, we're going to start seeing it in the middle of Home Depots and then we're just going to be totally confused. <laughs> You wear a lot of hats and have worn a lot of hats throughout your career, obviously running your own business, 
strategizing on how to run your own business, strategizing for others to have a business. You've been writing messages, delivering them, speaking them, speaking about it. If you had to choose which hat you wanted to put on each day, which one of those do you like wearing most? Mm, gonna sound kind of corny, but what I love doing is being the difference maker. I mm. love finding the goal, the pot of gold that's in your business. I love having you see it when that light bulb goes on, like, oh my gosh, I never saw it this way. Most entrepreneurs don't want to do the math. They don't want to look at their money. And so when I finally get them to fall in love with their P&L and look for where are the diamonds, look for where's the money you're leaving on the table, look for where the opportunity is, that makes my day. I'm, I get so geeked up and so excited my goal is not for people to be dependent on me. My goal is to teach you, Lou, so you look at it. And we're still working in relationship because we keep making more money, right? I don't want you addicted to me. I want us to keep building your business, building millions, start taking care of your personal wealth, start creating multiple income streams of income so that we're really leveraging your best talent and your, your genius. I love how she just pushed it off to what everybody else is doing. She wants to be the difference maker. I like that. You like that's the joy though. That's what makes you smile the most. I like that. That's that just it does. It makes me so happy. Cause then once you get it, you can't it's like that rubber band, you know, you can't once you stretch a rubber band from its original shape, it can never go back. Right. And so once I stretch you and now you know, you can't ever go back to not knowing to go, there's gotta be a formula. I started creating these rogue spreadsheets for myself because I felt like an idiot in my meetings with my CPA. Cause I'm like, why do I have to have two P and L's? That makes no sense to me. Why? <laughs> like, just show me the one that has money. They're like, yeah, but that doesn't really have money. Then why are you showing it me? Then just show me the one that doesn't. <laughs> so, I love, I love I'm like, why does this have to be so complicated? Now there is methodology for that, but we're small business. We don't need a bunch of the stuff that some CPAs are giving us. Some CPAs aren't doing their job. Let me just be clear. No, that you is know, 100% true. Yeah, yeah, you might be paying a lot of money and for what? Like QuickBooks, you can run a report, right? So what when you start seeing the connection, and I, again, I created these spreadsheets for me, and then my clients started saying, Lou, can, can I have that spreadsheet? I'm like, I'm like it's it's a rogue spreadsheet. I just wanted it to make sense for my little technical brain, my little creative brain, right? So that I could see it and do something with that number versus, again, I have a million dollar business. How How is it that I did not know I was losing $70,000, right? Because it's a little bit of money every month and you're like, oh, it'll roll over. It'll roll over. It, yeah, it rolls over. And then it was 70 grand. Well, that 70 grand had to come out of my savings. Yeah. Right? Like, oh, hello. I'm like, how do we have this not happen again? So I had a great Excel wizard that would help me create these. I'm like, here's the number I want to know. Here's what I want to understand so I can coach my team. It all started with me coaching my team. And then it was like the, you know, skyrockets went off, right? Fireworks. Like people were like, how come no one has ever told me that? I'm like, I know. How come nobody's ever told us that? <laughs> I love it. I also love asking guests this question, Susie. I want to see what's going on. Look, you've been thriving in your career and you've been helping, you've been coaching people figure out the right strategies that make the most sense for them to make them thrive, which means that you're thriving. Yes. Here's the question I want to ask. When you have trouble thriving, which all of us do time and time again, what practice do you seek or maybe which individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? Mm. First, I have to get centered to me. Like what's important to me when I'm not thriving, I'm usually either burnt out. I'm doing something, meaning I'm not taking care of my well-being, right? Or I've hit a capacity with my learning. Like I've taken it as far as I can go. So every year, Lou, I'm looking at who's going to help me go to that next level. What strategy do I need to put in place? What skill set do I need? And who's the best person to help me achieve that? So I've always had coaches in my business. I've had business coaches. I have three financial coaches. I have a health coach. I have a fitness coach. Now I have a personal development coach, AKA a therapist. So depending on what's happening in my life, I plug in. And then sometimes I need new coaches because you outgrow them. And that's okay if you outgrow them, but replace them with someone that's gonna push you to that next level. 
And so in this season, I'm learning to take care of me and my well-being and not hustle so much. That's been harder than the hustle, I got to be honest, to say no. And and literally, Lou, this is so sad, but it might help somebody. Somebody may be the little workaholic, just like I am. I had to create like a, a fun sheet. Like, what do I like to do when I'm not working? Because for me, the work starts when I'm when I stop working. Like, I, I don't know what I like to do. So I've had to create this list of, I love to kayak. I love to get a massage. I love to go and be at the beach. I love to be at the water. I love to go on my boat. I love to go hiking in the wilderness. I love to go watch waterfalls. And so when you're off, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we're so exhausted that when we're off, we just want to shut it all down. Hmm. Well, that's not stress management. That's just shutting it all down. And not that there's not a place for shutting it all down, but in order to manage stress, there has to be some outlet that helps you manage that stress. So I'm plugging into different people and I've hired wrong people, right? I've hired wrong coaches. I've spent a lot of money wrong. I think that's part of the evolution. I've always learned something, but either I've been looking for a quick fix. I've been looking for like the silver bullet and there's none. I've got to roll up my sleeves and do the work that needs to get done so I can have that result that I desire. I like it. Let's do the admin part of the show. Susie, share with the listeners all the places people can find you, websites, URLs, social handles, things you're promoting, whatever it might be. We will put it all in the show notes, but it always gets more engagement when they hear it from you. So it's really easy. It's my name, Susie Carter, C-A-R-D as in dollar and dinero, E-R because I'm the profit coach, Susie Carter. So that's all my social handles. That's even my website, susiecarter.com. You can go there. You can get a copy of my book, Power Your Profits. Everything that I just talked about is in that book. That is my journey to building a seven and eight figure business. Of The stuff that I wish I would have known that I didn't know, and I put it in that book. Like if I knew then what I knew now, it would have been a whole different ball game from day one, right? Part of that's just learning. And so Power Your Profits, when you buy the book from our website, um, you get a bunch of bonuses. So definitely want to buy it there versus Amazon or somewhere else. You still can buy it there, but I'm going to give you some bonuses and prizes. And we all love prizes. I'm going to give you some prizes. We're going to put that link on the notes so they can go straight to it. They're going to click on the image. They're going to go right to it, listeners. That's what you need to know. (laughs) Yes. All right. You ready to go down Fun Street, Susie? Because you were looking for fun things to do. I'm going to make life easy for you on this podcast show. Here on Thrive Loud, we're going to take you down Fun Street. And here's how we're going to start it off. There's this is a It's a tough question, but we like asking it. Do you have an all-time favorite movie or maybe one that you love to rewatch? I do. And it is um, The Wizard of Oz. Ooh. And I think I knew, like, I wanted to be Judy Garland. I wanted to be, <laughs> like, if, if I could ever try out for a play, that's what I would do. And I think it's because she was so caught up in, the, in what she thought the world was versus what the world is. Mm showed you possibility. It's always been, home has always been right there. Possibility has always been right there. Wealth has always been right there. We just need to create it, right? And so a lot of the drama that we bring, we bring in because we bring it in, like, does it have to be there? No, we can create something new and create a new reality. Love that. And and the whole yellow brick road leading to an emerald castle and everything like that in Emerald City, I, it's so on, on brand with you. So we're, <laughs> we're totally heading down that road. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little bit of a speed round here. I'm going to ask you a certain question. First thing that comes to your mind, most of these things lift you up, make you feel good. They basically make you thrive. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Of late, a song that you love to listen to or maybe one that pumps you up. (laughs) Okay. I have to share this because I'm at my daughter's house in San Francisco and she has a two-year-old. So I am singing the Propeller song and it makes me giggle and laugh with her and she cracks up. So it's Do the Propeller by the way, girls. (laughs) Listeners need need to know, for those who are loyal listeners, we we usually ask this question so we can incorporate the music into the show. Um, Um, now the Wiggles, the the Wiggles are now like 20 some odd years old. And now we're going to have that song on on the show. Um, my, my children are going to go have a flashback from 20 plus years ago. So the Wiggles might have made thrive loud. What is the world coming to? Okay. (laughs) You got me on this one. We knew this interview would not be boring. We knew it would not be. I knew it was going to be interesting right from the get go. Susie, uh, a favorite food. that's not a dessert. 
Oh, well, this is an interesting fact. I don't even like dessert. So give me okay. some chips and salsa and a margarita, and we are so happy. She's she's lumped up the dessert question all in one. I, who wouldn't want chips and salsa and margaritas all day long? I got to love that. You like it salt on the rim? Or no? Of course. Love salt on the rim. Give me salty crunchy. I'd rather have a pickle than a piece of chocolate. Favorite type of margarita? Let's go down there. Which kind of margarita do you like the most? I like a classic skinny. Oh, I like it. Okay. An activity you wish you did more of? Ah. Uh, Kayaking. Ooh. An activity you wish you did less of? Work. Hmm. If I could snap my fingers and Susie Carter can be anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. where is she? Italy. Which part? I oh, love Florence. That is the girl's Disneyland. <laughs> that is the girl's Disneyland. I love it. Susie Carter. Power Your Profit. Truly a pleasure to have you on Thrive Loud. Awesome tips of advice. We will put the links directly through the special link that's going to get to your site where they can get the book and everyone can learn more about you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for helping everybody. And thank you for coming on Thrive Loud. Thank you for having me. And if you want a real song, we can put uh, Bruno Mars billionaire because I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. And I want all my students to be a billionaire so freaking bad. <laughs> there you go. That. Thank you. My producers just, just, just got... Patting on their back. They just lifted the roof and said, oh, thank goodness. God. I didn't have to play the wiggles. <laughs> Pleasure to have you on, Susie. Thank you, Lou. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for being a voice in our industry and being a change maker yourself. I value you and you are a badass, my friend. You got it. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep moving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.